again. I'm Michelle Johansson. Um, I'm the coordinator of diversity, equity, and inclusion on campus. Um, I'm not the only person who does DEI work on campus. Um, it is for everybody, no matter what discipline, uh, no matter which department or office. So, um, you know, uh, one of the things that we do a lot of is collaboration. So, um, really into that. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm also an adjunct in the history department. Right now, I'm teaching Mississippi history. And I also work in international education, so my role in that is to uh, work with our international partnerships and then also um, help students, faculty, and staff who are interested in going abroad, studying abroad, researching abroad, um, taking advantage of some opportunities that come our way, try and get folks to do that too. So um, I'll be talking about that a little bit as well. Um, so yeah, so that's me. I'm a Delta State graduate. I came here in to the Delta in 1997, um, and I wrote in my journal two to three years, you know, and that was 1997. So um, I live here in Cleveland. I've made Cleveland my home. Um, I have a family here, and uh, I'm very appreciative of the opportunities that Delta State has uh, presented for me and given me a chance to grow. So I hope you all will feel that way too, um, since you're new to Delta State, um, or somewhat new. Some of y'all have been here before. Yeah, so welcome everybody. Um, uh, I am the person that sends out the emails about the DEI updates and events and stuff like that. So um, that, that's me too. So a lot of times people are like, oh, that's you. You send that out. I'm like, yes, I, I send that out. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll just give you a little brief history about um, diversity efforts at Delta State. Um, I'm just going to start in the 2000s. Um, I'm going to mention you're also facilitating one of the AQ courses. Oh, yes. Right? Yes, I am facilitating facilitating one of the AQ courses, uh, the Inclusive Teaching for um, Equitable Learning course. So we just had our course launch today, which is very exciting. So, um, but yeah, I do that too. So I do a little bit of everything, like everybody on campus, everybody <laughs> does a little bit of everything. Um, but yeah, so in 2008, uh, then President uh, John Hilpert um, commissioned a, um, a diversity committee. Um, and so that was sort of the beginnings of a more formal diversity effort on campus. Um, we've had two diversity chairs um, under the diversity committee, um, Professor uh, Georgine Clark, who is Professor Emerita from the Division of Languages and Literature. And then um, after she retired, it was Professor Arlene Sanders, who is also now Emerita as well, um, from uh, political science. And so um, those are really big shoes to fill. Um, they are giants on this campus. Their legacy is incredibly powerful. And, and so um, it was really an honor for me to uh, learn from them and work under them and then now um, have this position. So, uh, so diversity uh, efforts have been around uh, Delta State's campus. Um, um, and so, you know, this is a continuation of it. Um, some of our pillars, so I've of course put our social media up there, so um, Facebook, Instagram, there's a Twitter account now, my email is just mjohansen at deltastate.edu, it got cut off there. Um, but, uh, you know, so that's one of the ways that you can follow what's happening on campus. Um, we are working with students this semester uh, to uh, make it more student friendly, which means there's now a TikTok account. There's nothing on the account, so <laughs> just yet. But the, the students promise that they're going to do some TikToks. We've already gotten um, some really good feedback from them and some volunteers. So we'll start having some TikToks up, too. Um, I'm going to leave that up to them to do that. But again, we're very student focused. Um, we have in our DEI committee, which everybody is welcome to join. We want to have representation from all parts of campus, um, every department, um, every supporting office and such. Um, we do have students on our DEI committee. We have about six different sort of sub uh, committees or groups. Um, one is students, two is faculty and staff, three is about outreach and visibility, um, which involves our alumni, which involves our community members. Uh, we have a programming subcommittee. Uh, we also have um, curricula, informal and formal. 
um, and then we have campus climate as well. So there's a lot to do and we try and come up with projects and ideas and initiatives that fit under those uh, broad categories there and so I'll have some examples later. So um, if you're in the AQ class uh, or in the AQ course, uh, this was I thought an interesting quote that they had in the syllabus. Diversity is a fact, equity is a choice, inclusion is an action, and belonging is an outcome. So uh, while we are DEI, um, there are some unspoken letters that would go along with that. One is belonging, one is justice. Um, if you put, if you, uh, I've seen some uh, institutions now that are using JEDI, which I think is really cool to be Jedi. Like, I would love to be a Jedi. I talk a lot about student success because I think that that is part of the role of equity on campus is giving students, making sure students are connecting to the resources that they need in order to be successful. And so we want to make sure that we're doing that too. Um, so again, if you have any thoughts about like, oh, would this work? Would this work? Or this was at my previous institution or workplace, um, you know, that's the great part about having new folks on campus is that there's oftentimes this influx of new ideas and, oh, could we try this here? Maybe modify it and, and try it here or, you know, stuff like that. So um, I think that that is one of the nice things about um, having new faculty and new colleagues who are gonna share. So I'm gonna talk about um, a couple of things that are really important to DEI as far as programming. Um, one is winning the race. Uh, the winning the race conference is our signature annual conference on this campus. It happens the last week of March. It starts on a Sunday um, and then goes Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, and so, um, We've had you know, national speakers come, we've had local speakers come, we've had people from uh, Jackson and the region come and talk. Um, it is about uh, race reconciliation, equity, um, talking about uh, social justice, um, education, economic opportunities, health care. So all of the things that we all care about, right? And we know that affect our students, know that it affects uh, our communities, um, our region and such. So um, it's just, it's, it's, we plan the session so it's on the class schedule. Okay, so then that way if you want to bring your class, which is highly encouraged. Um, in the years past, we've had it in person. Last year it was a virtual, uh, virtual event. Uh, we're hoping to have it in person, as safely as possible, um, again, and such. And so the theme this year is you are the I in team. And so it's talking about teamwork. Um, we're gonna have some coaches come and talk about how they motivate uh, their teams, which oftentimes are uh, people from different parts of the country, different parts of Mississippi, different backgrounds and such. How do they motivate them to achieve a goal um, and such? So, um, and then we'll have some workshops. We will have what's called faculty forum, which is really, really great, um, where each college um, uh, has some sort of uh, professional development for um, their faculty to come to. And so that's really um, a great way to uh, get involved, to be part of this, um, or to learn from your peers and such. We do have a lot of student-driven uh, programming and such. So just, uh, we talk about winning the race really, really early. If you're teaching in the spring, you know, just kind of look at that last set, uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday um, as possibilities for, hey, can I bring my class to one of the sessions, okay? So, or uh, just sort of building it into your syllabus because that's always really, really helpful when faculty bring their um, students, their classes, um, because uh, it, uh, it's just an extra thing and, and it's sort of like a field trip. I, when I was teaching, I was like, we're gonna take a field trip today. We're gonna, you know, we didn't really go far, but still it was something a little bit different. Uh, for the students of my class to be able to experience and be with others and, and hear some really um, interesting speakers. So uh, winning the race is an annual conference that we do. Um, there is also Safe Space and Ochre Out. Um, so um, that is another signature program that um, was started by diversity. Um, and, uh, and so Safe Space is a program that works with uh, campus, uh, student organizations, faculty, staff, departments, community members um, to 
uh, create greater awareness and understanding for LGBTQ community and um, allies. So um, we will be having some safe space trainings this fall. Um, Ochre Out is our um, October celebration. It started off as one event uh, the first year, and now it has blossomed into um, a whole month of events. Uh, and we do other things during the year, but really October is a big year. So uh, we just had our first um, LGBTQ plus friends and allies coffee social. Uh, CT um, is one of the advisors for that uh, organization. We've had um, a gay straight alliance before, and then it turned into a gender and sexual Alliance and it's risen and fallen based on our student leadership and our faculty leadership with that so um, we're looking to uh, revitalize that again um, and such and we do actually have a grant uh, we were refunded by the LGBTQ Fund of Mississippi so really excited about that um, and so uh, we will be having more um, more events happening um, and these are some of our <laughs> Oak Rat posters. So this is 2019 when we were celebrating Stonewall. And then last year, um, it was Queens of Quarantine, um, so which was a lot of fun um, and such. So again, we'll be doing Ochre Out um, again this year. So be on the lookout for that. This is one of our big events that's coming up. Super, super proud of this event. Um, it is, so in, on March 10th, 1969, uh, just a couple of years after Delta State integrated with its first black students, there was a sit-in in Keithley, which was then the president's office um, and such. And there were 52 students who were arrested that day, Delta State students. And they were arrested, they were taken to Parchman Penitentiary, which is the state penitentiary up the road. And they spent the night there. Uh, and such. And so um, this, uh, I won't go into the whole long story of it, but this is the account of the stories uh, from the people who were actually arrested and such. So this is funded by the Mississippi Delta National Heritage Area, a grant which actually is right downstairs. We are the headquarter area for the Mississippi Delta National Heritage Area. So if you see stuff, they have grant opportunities and, and stuff. I mean, it's really, really great. Um, and so anyway, so they funded us to do an oral history project. We got the money in 2019. Uh, we started doing traditional oral histories, uh, or actually we got it in 2018, started doing it, and then um, the fall of 2019, uh, Ted Fisher came on board with Delta State um, at the art department, and he is a documentarian, and he just took this on and showed us how to do so many more things. And so now it is actually an award-winning documentary. We won um, Best Short Documentary at the Fort Smith International, Fort Smith, Arkansas International Film Festival. We were nominated another one in Texas, and so our little laurels are down there. But this is made entirely by a Delta State a crew of students, current students, the 1969 alumni, faculty, staff, and such. So we're really proud of it. We're going to have our Mississippi premiere at the BPAC. Um, on October 4th. So I'm going to give you guys this. Feel free to take a bunch of posters, put them where you think mm -hmm. people will see them, you know, uh, and stuff, because y'all know where you would you. see stuff. Um, so anyways, but that is the kind of stuff, that is a collaboration between um, the art department, social sciences and history, Lang and Lit, um, the new DBAC uh, program, uh, the archives, um, the, you know, archives and library and such. So there's so many people who are involved in that. Um, a student made that poster, um, you know, just everything. So, um, you know, we're really proud of those things, but those are the kinds of things that we want to be doing through DEI and through collaborations with departments. Um, a, a current Delta State student, when I picked that up, that poster up, he saw what I was doing. He's an African-American student and he said, well, what is that? And he said, oh, wow. And then he said, they're not going to let you do that. I'm like, what do you mean? Who's not going to let me do that? What? And they said, and he was just like in disbelief um, that, we were, that we were doing this, that we had made this movie and that we were going to show it at the BPAC on the big screen. But we are, and we have the support of the administration. And, um, you know, it was President LaForge's idea. He was like, we're going to have it at the BPAC, right? In the big hall. And I was like, yes, we are, and stuff. So again, we want to be doing these kinds of things, telling the stories that 
um, if you look at the 75th anniversary of Delta State, um, sort of official history of that time, glosses over this entirely. Uh, and such. So these are the things that we want to be doing here on campus because it makes a difference for our current students. It makes a difference for how we show Delta State in the community. These are all community members. These four folks are community members who still live here in Cleveland uh, and such. And so it makes a big difference to tell their stories, have them tell their stories and, and set the record straight. So. Okay, um, and Okra Out, we'll have, we're going to have a new Okra Out uh, poster coming up soon, so be on the lookout for that, and I will make sure to get some into your buildings so y'all can distribute them where you think people would see them and such, so um, let's see. Okay, so other things that DEI does. Um, we have an upstander recognition. We started this last year, and so this is where faculty and staff can nominate their peers, their colleagues, um, because they see them doing something awesome in, that's related to DEI. It can be research, it can be in the classroom, it can be um, in an office space that um, one of our previous DEI upstanders um, works at the um, career services office. And someone was just so impressed with how he went out of his way to make all of the students there feel really comfortable and feel really special and work with them and their talents and you know trying to get them ready for a career. And so um, a faculty member, um, you know, had, had taken a class there and just, you know, it was like, wow, this is so great. So again, um, this happens every month. Um, there's a little QR code here. This is also on Facebook and on our Instagram and on our Twitter and stuff. The little co QR code is there and I put it in the weekly emails as well. So you can nominate a peer, um, a, a colleague who's doing something awesome on campus. And so they get campus-wide we're getting posters that get printed up, they get certificates, and they get some little goodies and stuff. But um, it's just a way of thanking people for the work, because we know people are doing the work on campus. We know that they are making a difference. Um, and so we want to sort of recognize them for that. So, um, okay, other things that we do. <laughs> There's Vaughn. Um, so we have started a DEI book club. We started over the summer, and we read um, when They Call You a Terrorist, a Black Lives Matter memoir. Um, and so we had about 12 people from campus, and including one, fa uh, one um, librarian from uh, the public library, as well as our community uh, member. And so um, there's Vaughn and Denisha um, in the library. And then this fall, we are reading um, Their Eyes Were Watching God. Um, and actually, CT is helping to facilitate that. Yay! Um, and, stuff. and so again, these are just opportunities for faculty to get involved diverse I mean it's a it's almost twice the size of the of the summer group and it's a really diverse group of people from all over campus um, and based on the feedback from over the summer one of the, the people liked it and or, you know came back for the fall one is that they just liked being with their colleagues talking about a book talking about issues sharing in this common experience and so you know as much as we try and create that for our students right we want them to feel a sense of belonging we also want y'all to feel like you belong here too okay and and that uh, this place is for you as well so uh, we're doing that through some books we do this idea swap, um, and so uh, I will um, gladly take suggestions from people, but I also may hit you up uh, for like, hey, give us something that you're reading, listening to on a podcast, um, you know, just whatever, and stuff that you'd like to share. So um, Chuck uh, Westmoreland recommended Burn It Down, an intersectional feminist podcast about the biggest stories in sports and also the podcast Welcome to Your Fantasy, The Dark and Sordid History of the Global Phenomenon Chippendales. So again, it's just something, I mean, we've had people who recommended Dolly Parton's America, the podcast, which, you know, was, if you've listened to it, it was just really amazing and stuff. So again, just peers sharing with each other. Um, and then, um, Haley Scroggins recommended uh, Tina Clark's memoir, Southern Discomfort, about growing up in rural eastern Mississippi in the 1950s and 1960s and such. And so I take those suggestions year-round. And so if you have something that you feel like, oh, everybody should read this or everybody should 
reading with yes. Patrick? This is about the Delta, right? Yeah. Right yeah. here. Yeah. He would, yeah, I think I know this, yeah. Uh, a Teach yeah. for America student wrote a book about her experiences uh, working yeah. here in the Delta. And uh, a student she was working with was um, arrested for murder. Uh, so it, it chronicles that story. Mm -hmm. Is this your suggestion? Yes. Totally take it. All right, okay. cool. I'll get your headshot and put it up. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's really easy like that. I mean, if you feel like, oh, this is so good and I want to share it with people, I think other people should read it, listen to it, whatever and stuff, we do that too. So again, just trying to build community here, especially now that COVID has made it more difficult for us to do things a lot of the times, um, just some connections and you get to see your friends uh, and such. So, um, okay, international stuff. So what I do with international stuff is I try and connect people with our international partners or opportunities that I find out about. So um, Dr. Leslie Stewart is a professor in political science. Um, she had expressed to me, um, she studies international politics, particularly like women in politics and stuff and globalization. So anyways, um, we have a friend, Renzo, who's a professor um, in Brazil, in Annapolis, Brazil. And uh, he and I were talking and he was like, yeah, we should do something for International Women's Day. And I was like, okay. And so I sort of put it out there, like, who's interested? And Leslie said, yeah. And so they did this great um, joint session um, and stuff. And so it's really... It's really, again, another way of making these connections with people, meeting colleagues at different institutions and such. So do that, we have partnerships, um, three uh, Brazilian institutions, an institute in Russia, uh, some in China. Hopefully we'll sign the one with the folks in Melbourne, Australia soon, uh, Poland, Bulgaria. And also if you have connections at other institutions around the world, hey, we'd love to do that too, okay? And especially now that people are more well versed in Zoom and Google Meet and stuff like that, it makes it even easier to do. Um, there are opportunities to present um, at some of these virtual conferences or record a presentation. I've done this before for the Russians because the time difference makes it really um, difficult sometimes to, to get the right timing in and stuff. So you can pre record a presentation and send it that way. So we've had people from all different departments uh, do that kind of stuff. So if you're interested, let me know. Of course, I want to send you places too. So um, once it's safer to travel and, and we're, we're not going to get stuck in another country, um, do that kind of stuff too. So um, that's what I, I try and do uh, with the international ed. Um, this is another one that we did. Um, it was through the Grammy Museum. I was supposed to do one later in the summer and then uh, Dr. Rolando Hertz from the Delta Center for Culture and Learning was supposed to do one as well, but uh, we got kind of caught up in the geopolitics of the Biden-Putin summit. And so the American Center in Moscow kind of shut down for a bit. So we didn't get to do ours, but the Grammy Museum did. And again, I'm trying to sell Delta State. I'm trying to sell the Mississippi Delta, um, this region, this state um, as a place to come uh, and such and make connections. So again, they did a great job um, with this. Um, so again, we do stuff, um, safe space, we'll be doing some safe space um, stuff, but this is, this is just a post that I had up for International Transgender Day of Visibility. Um, and again, posted out on social media, it's amazing what, what kinds of reactions we get, mostly positive from people, especially alumni who follow along now on social media. And so many of them have said, this is so cool, like there was no way that I, you know, this was around when I was here at Delta State. So um, during the summertime, it kind of slows down because this summer we didn't have any students on campus and, and stuff like that. So we moved to virtual stuff. So we were doing a bunch of um, Facebook Lives. So you can see we had a whole thing for Pride Month. We are also doing community outreach. Um, and so that's why social media is so important. A lot of our community members are on Facebook, and so we do Facebook Lives. And so this was a, part, a collaboration that what is Juneteenth? Um, the chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was having a Juneteenth celebration in Mount Bayou. Um, we did not have anything here at Delta State because they were having something there. And so one of the things I want to do is help amplify um, what's going on in the community and make sure that our Delta State folks are know, know what's going on and also be a good partner, a good neighbor with um, other organizations in the community. So 
they were really cool and it's it's really blossomed into a great friendship um, and collaboration they were here on campus a couple weeks ago and they did the live on the floor for their 70th anniversary which was so much fun and so hopefully we'll be doing more of that. The live on the floor is where they blocked off right in front of the president's house and they had a party there. And DJ, dancing, strolling and stuff. It was very cool. Um, again, like this is, this is y'all, your faces could be up here. I mean, you're bringing such wealth of diversity, experiences, um, your uh, areas of, of research and stuff like that. Like, I would be happy to host any of the kinds of events that you think would be valuable that you want to share with people um, and such. So, um, yeah, I'm including these because there's a student, but there's also a faculty member. There are faculty members there and such. There are more students down here. So this really is a part of everybody. So again, um, if you have ideas of something you'd like to, to do or share events, um, that sort of stuff, you know, that is, that is, I'm, that's what I'm here for uh, and such. Um, so that's just another thing that we had. That'll be in the spring again. It's a Sexual Assault Awareness Month clothesline project. And so some of the stuff we do is virtual. Some of the stuff, if we can do it safely, um, we did that outside on the quad and stuff. And that was a communal art project that we did um, all together. So um, again, this is another example of how faculty can get involved. This is uh, Silma Ferreira. Um, who you know came to Delta State as a new faculty just like y'all I was like I would love she teaches Spanish she was like I would love to have more interaction between international students Spanish speaking students and American students and such so you know she said can you help I was like yeah so it's a collaboration between Division of Languages and Literature and DEI this is a student driven event that's happening next week student run student planned all I did was help pay for posters and help get the word out right but like again very much student driven so if you have students who have great ideas right and you want to help them along that's great um, happy to help with that too I, I believe I'll use my I statement I believe that it makes our campus a better place um, it makes it more inclusive for faculty and staff to see themselves represented to see themselves invisible um, roles as uh, not just as faculty mentor uh, faculty in the classroom but also mentors to students um, it increases visibility of issues hopefully exposes uh, students to um, different perspectives different ideas I mean World Afro Day the number of faculty who reached out to me and said hey how do I get involved in this I mean it was amazing and it was just like okay well here's the students information because you know she's running the show we want to empower our students to do um, to be their full authentic selves because when they are that here at Delta State I feel like it just makes a huge difference um, and people can benefit from that everywhere so um, I'd like to say that um, you know studies have shown that the university is the place where people can engage with the most difference. They engage with people who are different, with them, different from them more than they do in the workforce, more than they do in their neighborhoods, more than they do socially. Um, this is their opportunity to learn how to work with people who are different from them. Um, and maybe to, to bridge gaps, to create a more inclusive uh, equitable society um, and frankly you know the more you come into contact with people who think differently than you and you have sustained engagements with them the better critical thinker you are because you have to think from perspectives that you've never thought from before that doesn't mean you have to adopt those perspectives you don't have to agree with them but you have to think from them and that process creates critical thinking and so that is probably, you know, if there had to be one thing that we hope students get out of universities, it's critical thinking. So, you know, this, this plays a very important role educationally, in addition to, you know, socializing the students, preparing them for a more diverse um, uh, life 
after graduation uh, because you know the world is getting more diverse the workplace is getting more diverse um, and people don't know how to work with diversity right now we see it every day people yelling at each other and protesting against each other and so forth so this is important we also have a lot of students who like for instance the trans students that I've met here you know they walk around sometimes invisibly and they're going through a lot and they're not seeing themselves represented and they feel completely isolated and alone and frankly they're very vulnerable they're vulnerable you know to attacks and they're vulnerable to depression and they're vulnerable to suicide but things like this it lets them know they're not alone it gives them an opportunity to not be invisibly suffering so i really appreciate what you're doing thanks and i appreciate your coming here and talking with us today and y'all thank you great and you know they listen to you they may not listen to the lecture necessarily or do the reading sometimes, but they will listen to you. It is the number one way that they get information. Like I asked you how you get your information. It is the number one way that they get information because if you say something about like, hey, there are these events happening, did you know about this? And stuff, it makes a difference for them because then it's, it's, it, they listen to you on that kind of stuff.